Coming to you from Southern California, this is Mindset, mental health news and information. I'm your host, James Curtis. On today's show. What is mental health? You know, I spoke for two years in preparation for this channel, just research, kind of sharing my story and then giving surveys out to the audience just to get general feedback. And I, you know, very diverse audiences. The first question on it, James, was mental health means blank and they get to fill it in. Over 93% said crazy. Exactly. Mental health does not mean crazy. Let me say that definitively. Mental Health has a TV channel online at mentalhealthchannel.tv. That was my part of my conversation with Jeff Fraley. He is the co-founder and executive producer of the Mental Health Channel. That of the Mental Health Channel, that is our main story today. But first, this news from the Mindset Report, the Mindset Report online at mindsetreport.com. The Mindset Report, your most comprehensive source for mental health news. The death of Sandra Bland while in custody in a Texas County jail has made news worldwide. The controversial video of the traffic stop that preceded her death now ruled a suicide while in the Waller County jail has gone viral. Sinjin Barnett Smith with the Houston Chronicle had this conversation with me earlier today. I'm Jean Barnett Smith, and I'm a criminal justice reporter for the Houston Chronicle. On July 10th of Friday um, in the afternoon, um, Sandra Bland, a 28 year old woman um, from the uh, Chicago area, but who had moved down here uh, to take a new job, was stopped by a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper, that's sort of like a state trooper, for failing to signal a lane change. Their interaction quickly spiraled out of control um, after she refused to put out a cigarette, um, which the trooper had asked her to do, and it ended up with him yelling at her to get out of the car and threatening her with a taser uh, and finally arresting her. Three days later, she was found dead in the Waller County Jail. Uh, It's a small jail about 50 miles northwest of Houston. Um, The official cause of death was um, suicide by hanging. And since then, it's gone totally viral. It's made international news um, as people have questioned the circumstances around her death and her arrest. As you said, the interaction seems to escalate after Sandra Bland refuses to put out a cigarette. Can you characterize that interaction for folks who may not have seen the videos yet? Essentially, Trevor Antonia asks for her license and registration, takes those, go looks goes and looks at them, walks back to the car. She's smoking a cigarette. He asks her to put it out. She says, why do I need to put it out? You know, I'm, I'm smoking in my car. Basically, that's a paraphrase. Um, and then he says, okay, you can step out of the car now. And, and then, you know, she objects, and, and that's when things really start to go off the rails. Once she's in jail and once she is in custody, there is some inquiry made of Sandra Bland of her mental state. Give us that summary. Well, sure. So in Texas jails, um, it's standard operating procedure for all, you know, arriving inmates to receive a uh, mental health assessment. Um, And it asks questions like, have you ever been depressed? Are you depressed right now? Have you ever thought about killing yourself? Have you ever attempted to kill yourself? And so in the Waller County Sheriff's Office, um, when Sandra Bland was booked into the jail, she was given one one screening right after the arrest and then one a few hours later. Um, and we've, we at first were a little confused about that. Why did she get two screenings? Um, and have since been told from the Sheriff's Office that um, that's actually a standard practice. They get one when they arrive at the jail and then one when they're formally booked in. All right. can be a, there can be a lag time there of several hours. So she goes from the state trooper's custody to the sheriff's custody. This mental health assessment, do they have like a mental health professional there looking at this stuff? Or is it, just, is it a deputy some jails, sheriff? Um, <clears throat> well, some jails do. And indeed, some jails uh, like have nurses and psychiatrists on staff. Uh, for example, like the Harris County Jail, which is the jail which services Houston and the surrounding county. Um, but it's a facility that holds 8,500 inmates and is one of the largest mental health facilities, quote unquote, in the entire country. For the Waller County Jail, it's holds 110 people. 
And so, you know, if there are certain answers to the screening, uh, they're supposed to contact a magistrate, which is basically like a judge. Um, many of them are judges, and then there are some hearing officers in other jails. Um, but those people can, uh, after they've been notified, they can order additional mental health evaluation or treatment or placement of the inmate in a different facility, as I, under- as I understand it. All right. So at this point, as far as you've been able to find out, it's not clear whether or not the person in the jail who reviews this mental health evaluation indeed has mental health training. Would that be a fair well, assessment? You know, if you get your peace officer's license or your jailer's license, you have to receive some basic mental health training. Now, in this particular case, after Sandra Bland's death, the Texas Commission on Jail Standards, which oversees county jails across the state, actually issued um, a note of non-compliance with minimum jail standards, saying that the jail had violated the state's minimum standards for jails. And one of the areas that they dinged the jail for was um, the jail couldn't provide proof that the jailers had received uh, the annual training from a mental health authority um, as they were required to by the jail's own internal guidelines. I guess your question, is there like a psychiatrist or counselor on staff who, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but the jailers themselves do receive some training, training, and that was an issue when it was reviewed by the Texas Commission on Jail Standards. Let's talk about the questions that are asked of Sandra Bland vis-a-vis this form. Your article goes into detail about those questions. Can you review that with us? Yeah, each assessment, uh, there were two different assessments given, um, had about 20 questions. Um, and they were like questions like, do you have a medical condition? Uh, are you currently suffering from any medical condition? And then it asked questions about, for example, depression, or um, if the person who it was being jailed, because this is given to all inmates, uh, the person uh, has ever uh, tried to commit suicide, or if they're feeling suicidal, or um, if they've experienced a recent loss, that was one issue, um, or if they were people who um, committed self-harm like self-mutilation or things of that nature. And so, um, and then it also sort of asked about what medications they may might be on. And you note in your article that of the two mental health evaluations that were completed, one was completed at 5.32 p.m. That's correct. That, that was right after she got to the jail. So that would have been the first evaluation. Right. In that evaluation, you write that Bland checked boxes asking if she had ever felt, quote, very depressed. And if she was currently feeling that way, she also checked a box asking if she felt like killing herself in the last year. And to both of those questions, she answers in the affirmative. Is that right? That's correct. After that evaluation, and we should say that for for the sake of completeness, the reason for her feeling depressed had to do with the loss of a baby as far as she indicated on the on the jail form is that right yeah there's another evaluation after this evaluation and the answers aren't exactly the same yeah th- some of the answers on the second form were different okay and that's so for example she said she said in the second form that she wasn't very depressed and she hadn't ever ever suffered from depression. Um, but she did say she had tried to kill herself, um, and that, you know, the reason being given the loss of the baby. So um, why those answers are different is one of the things we're trying to puzzle out. With respect to where this incident, this investigation is, where are we at as of now? What do we expect uh, to see going forward? So two autopsies have been done in Sandra's case, correct? One of them by um, Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences, which is the morgue down here. They do um, autopsies for Waller County. So those results are expected to be released today. Um, And that's going to potentially answer questions and raise more questions. Um, The second autopsy won't be available for a while. That was an independent autopsy requested by the family. And then in a few days, her funeral was scheduled for Saturday, but um, 
I was just seeing reports this morning that the Water County DA, the district attorney, wants to keep her body um, for a while in case additional testing needs to be done on it. So I don't know if that's going to affect when her funeral will actually end up taking place. And then the results of the investigation should go to uh, a grand jury in August, or at least that's the earliest that would happen. The DA said that he was treating the case um, as he would a murder investigation. And a lot of people latched onto that, thinking that he was saying it was a murder investigation. But he since clarified that to say he's, you know, investigating it with all of the rigor that he would a murder investigation. So doing all of the testing and trying to bring the full force of their investigative investigators to bear on the case to try and find out exactly what happened. Can you give us an idea of how the family feels? So yesterday um, they had a press conference because they were discussing the release of the dash cam video. Sandra Bland's sister, Sharon Cooper, said that she felt like um, the trooper had stopped her because she was she had out-of-state plates. They've said that they think it was totally unfathomable that Sandra would have killed herself and that she was this confident, driven woman who was excited about this job she was about to be able to start. And uh, they just have a ton of questions about her death. And that report that Sinjin referred to did come out today. It also confirmed the finding of suicide. I also had a conversation about this case with Alana Rocha. She's with the Texas Tribune about why Sandra Bland was in a jail cell alone. Alana Rocha, multimedia reporter with the Texas Tribune. And Monday, uh, the, both the sheriff's office and the DA, more the sheriff's office because, you know, they run the jail, they uh, detailed that every inmate uh, undergoes kind of a series of questions, a standard list of questions that tries to evaluate uh, their mental health. That in combination with a few other factors, um, you know, are the way the jail decides where to put that inmate and where they'll best be, you know, safe and safe for the other inmates. And so they were asking, uh, they did ask, and we have a copy of that questionnaire now um, filled out pertaining to Sandra Bland about her mental health and different questions. Um, they asked if she was suicidal, and there's some conflicts because one form says that she's never tried to commit suicide, and then another form is answered that she had as early as, as recent as this year, and it's because she said, evidently told the officer that it was as a result of having lost a baby. That in combination with the fact that, you know, the nature of her charge, which was assault on a public servant, by nature of that charge, it um, puts her in a category of being high risk. And so because of that, they separated her from other inmates when she got into jail. And, and that's why she happened to end up by herself in a cell for three days. So this assault charge, the basis of that would have been actions that took place that we can't see on the dash cam video. Do I have that right? Correct. She evidently, according to the officer, kicked him in the leg. And he said he had some scratches on his hands as well. And so because of that, she was under arrest for assault of an officer. But keep in mind, too, though, before she was even out of the car, she says, why do I have to get out of the car I'm not under arrest. He's like, you are under arrest. And he wouldn't answer her as to what she was under arrest for until, I guess, she kicked him off camera. And so that's where, you know, even lawmakers uh, earlier this week were saying, you know, after watching the video, we don't think she should have ever been arrested. The head of the Department of Public Safety here in Texas has said that he did not follow protocol. Has there been any discussion about how her responses, Sandra Bland's responses, to this mental health assessment that the jail does was handled? No, there hasn't. Um, The only question that's arisen when they provided the documentation yesterday, meaning the form that they fill out uh, kind of as the entry for an inmate coming into the jail, um, is just that that discrepancy, as I mentioned, talking about uh, have you ever tried to commit suicide? One part of the form says yes and details 2015 after, you know, following the loss of a baby or pregnancy. 